Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 19th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a number of patches to start out with. First of all, Oracle released its quarterly critical patch update or short CPU. The one vulnerability that's being addressed here among all the different vulnerabilities that uh, Oracle did fix is a vulnerability in the Oracle WebLogic server. It's the only vulnerability that reaches a base score of 10 in the CVSS scale, and it can lead to a full compromise of the web server without authentication. There is not a lot of details here, but Oracle states that this is an easily exploitable vulnerability that allows unauthenticated attackers with network access via HTTP to compromise Oracle WebLogic server, and that this vulnerability may also significantly impact additional products. So uh, pay attention to this patch. Now, probably the most popular piece of Oracle software is Java. And yes, there is another update for Java. So make sure you apply that. And if you're running any of Cisco's WebEx browser extensions in Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox, again, time to update. An unauthenticated remote attacker will be able to execute arbitrary code due to a vulnerability in this plugin. This vulnerability was found again by Google's project Zero. Quite a bit of details in their announcement about this vulnerability. So an exploit shouldn't really be all that difficult to come by. Now, then we also have an update for Node.js. Now, this only fixes a denial of service vulnerability, but definitely something you do want to address. It's not that difficult to exploit. It's a problem in that they're using a constant hash table seed, which means it's pretty easy to flood hash tables with data that an attacker may send you, which then leads to a progressively slower application until it eventually is no longer usable. And finally, we got a vulnerability in Bitdefender, the anti-malware product. Yet another problem with unpacking routines. In this case, it affects the 7Z format. Uh, that's, of course, one of the more complex but still popular compression formats. And the function that decompresses these files does contain a buffer overflow that is exploitable for code execution. And we got yet another interesting cryptocurrency compromise. In this particular case, Coindash, uh, they call themselves the operating system for crypto assets, was affected via a fairly straightforward website compromise. What happened here was that Coindash started an initial coin offering. In order to do so, they solicited funds from people who would like to invest in the coins they were offering and they published their Ethereum address. Now, while they were in the process of collecting these funds, their website was compromised and uh, some individual did swap the address for their own. So investors, instead of actually sending money to Coindash, send it to the attacker's wallet. It looks like about 2,000 uh, users were affected and about 8 million US dollars were lost in the process. Of course, in general, that wouldn't be any different from someone posting a bank account number in order to have money transferred to that account and an attacker then changing the number. Of course, with cryptocurrencies, uh, undoing these transactions is not easy or impossible. Now, Coindash did promise that it will reimburse affected users. And then we 
keep hearing news about insecure Amazon S3 buckets uh, being exposed and found by researchers and well, uh, possibly also being found by attackers. The latest victim after Verizon sort of fell into this trap a couple of weeks ago is Dow Jones. Dow Jones, of course, most famous for its index, but it also is behind a number of magazines like Wall Street Journal and apparently some of the subscriber data was leaked as part of this breach. There are different numbers that have been posted about the size of the breach, but it's anywhere between two and four million records. In this particular case, authentication was enabled, but essentially anybody with an Amazon account would be able to log in. It was not restricted to a particular limited group. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.